Hello, my name is David Brumley. I'm a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. In this video, we'll look at substitution ciphers. And there's really two things I want you to take away. First, how you can go about making a substitution cipher. And second, why substitution ciphers are completely insecure. And the way I'm going to show you they're insecure is I'm going to show you how you break them. The way a substitution cipher works is we substitute each letter of the alphabet in our plain text with a different letter in our cipher text. For example, suppose we want to encrypt the word dad. And I'm going to write E D A D like this in a functional notation to indicate that we're encrypting the word dad. Well, to do this, we need to come up with a substitution for each plain text letter to a cipher text letter. I've written here plain text and the letters A through Z. We now have to come up with a substitution. For example, we may decide to substitute the letter A for the letter R. Now the rule in a substitution cipher is the letter we substitute can only be used once. So I'm going to cross off the letter R indicating I've already used it. Mathematically what we're doing is we're actually permuting the alphabet. And so this is a permutation. If you don't know what this word means, don't worry. Let's continue making our key and substi uh, by substituting the letter B for the letter G. Now we've used G, so we would have to cross it off. And let's say we substitute the letter C for S and D for the letter X. And we'd keep doing this for all letters. Now I should point out it is perfectly okay to substitute a letter with itself. For example, we could substitute the letter E for the letter E. Of course, if we did this for every letter, we wouldn't have much, as a, much of a cipher, but it's okay within the definition of what it means to be a substitution cipher. Okay, so we've come up with our plain text and our cipher text for each letter of the alphabet to encrypt an actual word, we just carry out this substitution letter by letter. So for example, D maps to X, A maps to R, and D maps to X. So the encryption of dad is X, R, X. Well, so this is how you encrypt. How do you decrypt? Well, it works just as you would think. To decrypt, a ciphertext like X, R, X, we have to have access to this mapping from plain text to ciphertext, and then we'd go letter by letter. For example, we know X maps to D from a ciphertext to plain text, R maps to A, and X maps to D. So it works just as you would expect. Now, just to double check that you understand everything, what would be the encryption of the word cab, C-A-B. Well, of course, we know what this would be. C maps to S, A maps to R, and B maps to G. So the encryption would be S, R, G. Now, substitution ciphers have been used throughout history. The most famous, though, is what's called the Caesarian cipher. And it's named after Emperor Julius Caesar, who lived 100 BC to 44 BC. In a Caesar cipher, the cipher text is always shifted by three from the plain text. So A would become D, B would become E, C would become F, and so on. To decrypt, we would just shift back. Now it's important to note that while in a Caesarian cipher, we are always shifting letters by a fixed amount, this need not be the case in general for a substitution cipher. A substitution cipher doesn't have to be just a fixed shift length. Now an interesting question, of course, is how would you attack messages encrypted with a substitution cipher? Sometimes these are called for example, cryptogram puzzles.
Well, the best approach for breaking a substitution cipher is to look at the word frequencies and letter frequencies. By word frequencies, I mean when you are given a phrase where one of the words is one letter long, it's reasonable to assume the corresponding letter is a popular one letter word like A or I. Similarly, you can guess a common two letter word for an a common two letter encrypted phrase. Popular choices are words like on, it, as, and so on. And for three letters, of course, the most common is the. For example, if I show you the encrypted phrase R, S, X, A, X, R, U, V, well, I mean, I just made this up, but if you were going to go and try to, to attack this particular encoding, you could guess perhaps that the plain text for the letter R is A or I, and then go through and substitute all occurrences of the letter R for A or I, whatever you guess, and keep going. Similarly for the letter UV. Just like we can look at words like this, we can also look at letter frequencies. For example, the most common letters in the English language are E, T, A, O, I, and N. The least common are J, X, Q, and Z. So, for example, if we look at a ciphertext and the most common encrypted letter is X, we may guess this corresponds to the plain text letter E. Now, of course, this may not be right, and we may have to backtrack, and maybe X maps to T instead. And we'd keep going and going and going until we broke the cipher. Let's apply this idea to breaking the substitution cipher at picoctf.com. Picoctf.com. Looking at the text, we see it begins with a three-letter word. The encryption is JVL. Well, let's just guess that this corresponds to the plain text, the, T-H-E, because it's a popular three-letter word. Well, at this stage, we would go through and we would place all the J's with T's, all the V's with H's, and all the E's with L's. I'm sorry, all the L's with E's. So, for example, here's an L, here's an L, here's an L. And we do this for the entire text. We would then go on to guess another word. Looking at the second row, we see, for example, well, here's JVL. We see there's a Z here. And we may guess, well, hmm, it starts with T-H-E, and it's a four-letter word. Maybe Z maps to N. And we'd go through and substitute all the occurrences of Z for the letter N. Let's look at the two-letter phrase YR. It's right here. Let's suppose we were going to go to this two-letter phrase. Well, two good guesses are, well, this two-letter would correspond to either in the or on the. Suppose we made it in the. I-N, the. Well, then we replace all the Ys for the letter I. For example, one place the letter Y occurs is right here. Now we already know that the letter J corresponds to T, so we have TI. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And so we would know that our guess for in is actually wrong. And we'd go back and try something else. So for example, if we tried to replace it with O on the, so Y maps to O, we would end up with two, and that does make sense. Now, in this particular challenge, the key is to come up with this key word, and we, uh, if we keep going with our current guess, we would guess that it begins and ends with the letter T. We know that the Y maps to O. The next one is W, and if we go here, we see W occurs as a single letter word. And I think it's obvious to most people that this would be toast. And so this is actually the answer to the puzzle. And if you type this in at the website at PicoCTF as part of the game, you would have gotten the problem correct. 
So in summary, substitution ciphers substitute one letter in the plaintext for another letter in the ciphertext. However, they can be broken. In fact, these ciphers, substitution ciphers, are completely insecure. They're fun, but they should never be used to protect critical documents. And in particular, we saw two different attacks here. We saw frequency analysis on letters as well as the word sizes and what are popular words. Now this is a great topic to go and look at for more information. Um, there's some great resources online. For example, Wikipedia has a very nice article on substitution ciphers. And there's a lot of other nice articles if you search, for example, using keywords substitution cipher, frequency analysis, and cryptology and cryptography. So until next time, never stop hacking. This is David Brumley at Carnegie Mellon University.